soft. I don't know the price yet. I put my money on 47, 46 to 48. That's where it's going to start. Scar Quicks, back with another one. We got to talk about the accurate type S and the pricing. I mean, I have to, we have to be honest with each other right now. I'm not going to keep this long. The price is wild. Okay, now there's going to be some opinions. I've seen the videos. Others are going to say it's not that bad. It's right in line with the competition. I have to say something. Let me move the mic a little closer to get focused on what I'm saying. That price, it's, it's not acceptable. I have to bring some redactions. I started this video out. You saw what I said before. I said 47 to like 48,000. I was pretty confident. I even was like, 49,000 under 50 52 7,000 over the Civic Type R and let me be clear here right I prefer the Type S over the Type R like I think it looks better that's just me but I'm not gonna sit here in front that that price tag is something that we need to address okay that price tag come on now we're kind of in this space right now where we just getting prices on cars and we're just accepting them, right? And I know I'm one, I'm guilty of this too. I'm guilty of it. I can look at some of these cars and I'm just like, oh man, we should just be happy we got something. Oh well, suck it up. But I can see some of these prices are now starting to reflect the ADM and the markup that the dealerships are starting to finesse. And these manufacturers ain't dumb. The shareholders and the almighty dollar is very powerful. It's a very powerful persuasion. They're going to see people paying 10,000 over and they're going to say if they're paying 55 to 60k for Civic Type Rs, well then make it 52. But here's the problem with that, right? That's saying that if you went to an accurate dealership right now and got one for MSRP and the people that do, then I mean maybe guess okay, it's probably a decent deal, though it still should be under 50 because Here's, here's the thing, Acura is now shooting into big boy territory. And when you get into that, there's less leeway. There's less, you can get away with this. It's okay if you don't got this feature. Some of this stuff is unacceptable in that regard or in that category. Let's give you an example. The M240i starts at $49,000. Somehow BMW managed to make a coupe I know the Acura's two doors, four doors, so it might be a little different. It might be, you know, it, it's not apples to apples. It's like apples, not to oranges, but another fruit that's close to an apple. Apples to pears, okay? We're like apples to pears here. So one's two door, one's four door. So you can kind of have that caveat. But we're just trying to talk about the underpinnings and the overall package. BMW man should put 382 horsepower in an inline turbo six into a package that costs less than the front wheel drive turbo four cylinder that's based off the chassis of a Civic that's built under the parent company of Honda. Like you want to talk about a company that's, that's saving money across all their R&D, it's going to be Honda and Acura. Because we're using the same engine, same chassis, same transmission. We changed the body. They didn't even give us crazy bucket seats in the Integra. We don't even got the seats that come in the Civic Type R. How is the price tag this much higher? And here's the thing. I was going to give them the increase in the price tag, right? Because if you think about it, it's accurate. So they have to be a little bit higher because they're more of a luxurious brand and that's how they want to be positioned. So that's okay to do that. But how did BMW get an all wheel drive M240i with near 400 horsepower to be $52,000 as well? It might be 53, see I'm over here sweating. That's just, this has got me worked up. It might be $53,000. That's a thousand over the Acura Type S. And this is where manufacturers in a way kind of missed the mark or they end up putting themselves in a category where we're kind of like 
really the hardcore enthusiast is gonna have to buy this car. And hopefully they buy it enough that we see more of these later on so that we don't have a manufacturer come back and say, hey, y'all didn't buy it, so uh, we're not making it no more. We're like, hey, you priced it out of the stratosphere and we started considering other cars that are right next to it. And that is the thing. Acura doesn't need to have the Integra Type S in the same conversations as other cars that introduce more luxury features if you're trying to be in this luxury sports space. You don't even have ventilated seats. There is no dynamic controls to, to a degree that some of the other counterparts have. I'm not saying that they don't have that because they do. Because the Civic Type R has that. I'm sure the Type S brought over some of those things. But I'm saying certain creature comforts. The Audi S3 is all-wheel drive. It only makes 302 horsepower, so the Type S actually makes more. But we're talking about banging all of its sound systems. Even though the Acura, it has an ELS one, which might sound equally as good. But we're talking about heavy luxury brands right and really it's the brands right i can argue the sound could be the same but the person buying the car is talking about the brand they're gonna see bang and olsen they're gonna see certain leather components ventilated seats heated seats heated steering wheel all these things that the type s has some of those things but it's not enough see it's not enough for the seven thousand dollar price over the type r and they're the same car essentially aside for the body being different on the outside and the type s being a little bit bigger of a car but where is the seven thousand dollars right i wouldn't be mad at four thousand over five thousand i know people are like well it's just two more thousand dollars what's the big deal because you get into taxes you get into inevitable markup that some people are gonna have to pay at five thousand dollars my local accurate dealership said that we're talking about sixty thousand dollars plus tax we're at 61 we're in a whole nother ball game now and it didn't include front wheel drive turbo force and i like the car see that's the thing i can be I, there's no bias i can critique when something's wrong overall the car is great the price is where they messed up now because this should have been under 50,000. In my opinion, there might be others that feel like it offers everything we need to do, but that's what I'm saying in the landscape of cars that we're at right now with the way economy of scales and things are going, we are kind of accepting some of these prices and it's being a little too egregious or I can see when manufacturers are kind of stretching as far as they can reach to get as much as they can. And I think that's the problem. See, we shouldn't have to see prices like this and then find a way to accept them and be like, it's not that bad. Just hold on a second. It's, if you think about it, and here's the thing, we shouldn't have to be thinking about it. Acura. This price should have been under 50 at max. And I understand the Integra, which is similar to the Civic Si, was like six or 7,000 over that. And that too was a problem. But see, we kind of brushed that to the side saying, listen, we don't even like the way the Integra looks because you rolled this thing out and we were kind of like, mm, nah. So there's kind of like an expectation that the Integra Type S was to be much better or be very close because like, okay, you got your little money from the Integra trying to charge more, but they ain't really selling like you don't want. Cause I haven't, I mean, I've seen a few, what do I know about the numbers? But I would argue if I was to bet, if I was a betting man, that the standard Integra is not selling as crazy as similar cars. GR Corolla, well maybe not the GR Corolla, that doesn't count. But the Civic Si, a Golf GTI. I am I would argue that they're not at that scale if you're considering how much more they cost. Not for who they're trying to introduce. So if they wanted to be at 52,000, I think they should have started introducing other things that appeal to that type of buyer. And this goes against everything I believe in but there maybe should have been some type of dual clutch transmission. I know what I'm saying. I know I'm going against to save the manuals. I understand. I understand. I understand. I said that it had a manual as God intended, and it is how he intended, but sometimes things are a little imperfect. And if they were going to be in this range, this high price, 52 and up, you got to start appealing to the people that are in this bracket. And unfortunately, there are some people in this bracket that just want to drive automatics. 
And if your counterparts are offering that, then it's kind of like you get pushed into this realm. I don't think that it has to be that case. But what I'm saying is when you start getting included in the conversations of BMW, Mercedes and Audi, and that's where they want to be, that that is where Acura wants to be considered and Lexus, then you start having to cater to those demographics, right? The Civic Type R caters to me, right? I'm JDM, I'm, you know, manuals and bucket seats and, you know, not really big on creature comforts. We want dynamics of driving fun, sport compact. That's what we talk about. But if I look at the Type S and I say, oh, it's a little bit more luxury, the appeal of the Acura, considering the RSX Type S and the history we had, it was like a, just a little bit over the Honda, just the counterpart, just a few more dollars, nothing major, but nothing like this. The Civic Type R is $44,000, basically. This being seven, I say seven to eight, everybody's like, it's more like 7,100. But I'm like, between seven and 8,000 more? I mean, it's just a lot to swallow when you don't have, we didn't even get, again, the front seats are actually where I'm having my issue. We didn't get no buckets. There's no unique seats. It's the same ones that they're in the Integra. The same seats that are in the regular Integra are in the Type S and they're charging $7,000 more than the Type R with their basically Recaro seats. How? This is crazy. Now, I think the car is still very good. So this is, I'm wrapping this up, right? My opinion, they're off on the price. Should have been like $49,000, $48,000 max maybe start there and then maybe you can get into 52 if you have some of the features they have but i mean come on with the seats and stuff that i've seen and i mean it's a nice car i love it i love the way it looks this is kind of hard for me to say this is a hard thing for me to record i like the car then i saw the price and i'm like hey i don't like that price with the package it's like if you go to a restaurant your favorite food is spaghetti you're like oh i love spaghetti but then they're like, hey, this bowl of spaghetti is $55. And you're like, hey, I don't like spaghetti that much. <laughs> this is the same thing. It's like, I love sport compact cars. I like Integra Type S. I love that did the video on it. But like, I mean, come on. This price to me is disconnected from the reality of the market and who you're going to. There are people, myself included, willing to pay the extra over the Type R for something that's different. But to push this far, I can tell y'all, just they're just grabbing for the more money that they can. Then you add the markup, man, it's going to be wild out here. $65,000 Integris, here we come. <sighs> this car quicks. Just had to do a quick PSA on the price. I don't like it either. Leave your comments. Tell me what you think. Personally, I'm not feeling the price. I'm going to keep it a buck. That price is treated at ash, okay? Should have been under 50, but who am I? I don't run a company or car company, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll see y'all around next time. Be safe out there. Peace.